Welcome to the first podcast of The Real Talk Podcast. The Real Talk Podcast will feature entrepreneurs, politicians, charity leaders and other interesting guests with fascinating stories and a unique perspective on life. The podcast will promote personal transformation through inspiration, self-discovery and empowerment and uplifts and entertains audiences around the world. Today I'm joined by Trevor Brooks, who is a Conservative Party candidate for the Beaver by-election in Ashford, Kent. Trevor is running to be the next borough councillor for the Beaver Ward on Ashford Borough Council, following the death of the previous borough councillor. So welcome Trevor to the podcast thank and you. thank you for coming along. Tell us a little bit about yourself in your own words. All right, thank you Matthew. Um, my name's Trevor, um, I live in Ashford, I've lived in Ashford all my life, grew up on Stanhope Estate, um, I then um, done an apprenticeship, um, motor vehicle uh, trade, stayed in that trade, loved that trade, I love lorries, love trucks, uh, vans and anything mechanical. Yeah. Um, I um, moved out of the family home, got my own house, uh, met my, my, my now wife as well, got two lovely children, well teenagers if you want to say. <laughs> um, we moved to Hillbrow Lane, lived over there, um, a nice area. We had uh, back of Victoria Park, we had our dogs, we could walk out. I've always liked Ashford. And now I live off Brookfield Road, um, a nice area. Um, we've got lovely neighbours, lovely friends. And I'm lucky enough that my kids have grown up with some really good friends from going to nursery to, to school. They keep in touch with, we all do birthdays and all them sort of things together. So, um, yeah, currently um, I'm working in a workshop, running a workshop, a big truck dealership um, with all its bows. Um, and at heart, I'm a family man. You know, I mean, um, pet dog, um, like I said, two kids, a wife. Um, and I just enjoy the social element of that, what brings with it. Um, and me personally, the reason I wanted to stand is I wanted to bring a difference. Um, because you see on TV and I see, you know, counsellors, it, it, to me it seems they, they're all generic, the, the same type, stereotyped. Um, and I want to bring a bit of diversity to it, mm. you know what I mean? I want to bring um, that ethnic side to it. There's a lot of e- ethnic people living in our area, a lot of diverse people, and mm. I want to bring that together. I want to bring a community back together where it's been fragmented for so long. Let's bring that community spirit back, and that's what I want to do. I want to create a, a, an area, a ward, where we've got that, mm. you know what I mean, in that sense, if, if that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, so it sounds like you're very involved locally at the end of the day and yeah you sound like you've got a lot on your plate with your family and you're working what are you saying about family and working i'm i'm restoring it a lot i'm restoring a, a classic car yeah so when i get time i'm tinkering on that um i also um love walking uh i love uh history uh english history as well mm. i love going around the country looking at various places and and seeing things and i love facts mm. i just you know, um, if you ever seen a program called Friday Night Dinner? Yes. <laughs> my um, two children call me Martin <laughs> because my facts I come out with, we'd be at the table having dinner and I'll come out with a random fact or I have a book in my hand and read for mm-hmm. it and say, oh, did you know that such and such? <laughs> so Martin can be my nickname at home, but I love things like that. You know what I mean? I'm just a bit quirky like that, but I think it's good. Oh, good. So it sounds like you've got quite a busy sort of lifestyle. Mm. What do you think... Sort of what what makes you feel sort of inspired? What have you found in life? Because you, you've gone through quite a, a, a journey mm. to say you know you've got the family, you've you've got work, you, you know you're we're still in a car. You've now decided to get involved in politics. You know what what inspires you? You know to go out there and achieve greatness. Um, I suppose what it is is that if I look at my my life in a way. Mm. I've done loads of things. Um, I'm not bragging, not, not like massive, like life-changing things. But I've gone out and I've, I've driven around Europe, um, and you know, gone around various places in England, um, and we, I live a nice life. Um, I'm not wealthy by any means. I, I'm, I'm comfortable where I am, um, and I've reached a stage in my life. Where I think you know, what I mean, I want to bring a bit of me into the community, mm. um, and I want to change things and what inspires me it probably inspires me when I go outside and, I, and just seeing people just inspires me I'm a people's person mm. and 
you know that that inspires me to get communities together i live in a street where i've got uh, there are um the latvian family there's nepalese family there's a um, senegalese family there's an iranian family um and it's um, a jewish family and i just we all talk we all chat we all say hello to each other um and it's really nice yeah. and you know we all talk um and i like to bring that together you know what i mean and, and inspire people you know what i mean you know um now and again someone will knock on my door and said oh there you go look cooked a nice net release meal do you want to try some of that and and stuff and it's lovely it's lovely to be part of someone else's culture yeah. and let someone else into your culture as well where mine is um jamaican and irish mm. um it's nice to bring that jamaican side to people as yeah. well and the irish side as well um so just to inspire and go out there and and, and meet people mm. and and make a difference you know what i mean nice. yeah. but you've decided to stand as a conservative mm. um you're conservative candidate what what made you decide that you want to stand as a conservative what where why did you decide to join the party i've always been a conservative voter um although sometimes i don't agree with some of the policies they 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 make um and other things that i do i mean um for one thing um lover or hater uh, margaret thatcher she was the okay. one person who allowed the working man to buy his house yeah. you know what i mean and i always remember my mum and dad were coming home from school mum and dad said oh we're gonna buy a house you know what i mean and i think that's great because you know back then it was hard you know what i mean i was one of seven um growing up um, both mum and dad working you know and my dad to be proud to, to buy his own house um and i thought wow you know what i mean that 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 mm -hmm. that, that is something and you know uh, and the things they've done you know what i mean and you know, I've looked at other different parties, I've looked at their policies, um, but yeah, some have good ideas, but nothing's to fruition, and I just like the way that way it's run. Um, like I say before, you know, some of the policies, I, I, I'd say, well, like I wouldn't vote for that, and others think, yeah, definitely, you know what I mean, every day of the week, um, and I just want to, yeah, just just put it out there and and bring it back to to the people out there you know and, I, and I've always said this if you don't vote you haven't got a voice yeah definitely true you know so you've got a it doesn't matter what your political persuasion is but look at it because you know um, it's not worth you might I'm not saying to people not to who not to vote for but you might go for that party because their one policy is to do this but what's the rest of their rhetoric behind it um, you know but I, I like the whole rhetoric what comes with it mm -hmm. Well, I've been out on the, the trail with you, Trevor, mm. and Beaver Ward is quite a, a working class mm. ward. You know, it's a, a very labour leaning in terms of what it's always been. It's very, I'd say, labour but UKIP, and it, it, it's gone UKIP in the past. Mm. And, um, you know, why do you think these voters in Beaver are going to go from labour, UKIP, to voting for you as a Conservative? I. Basically, I, I, I hope so that they do, do swing the other way because of my values and what I stand for. You now, being a working man um, and the working values I stand for and the principles I stand for, it doesn't have to mean that because I'm a working man I have to support Labour. Um, I'm never going to go down a path of supporting uh, UKIP. Mm -hmm. um, and I can go back to days of living on Stanhope and knowing what... Um, and what was going on back then, you know, um, and, and some of the stuff went on back then. And I'll never, um, that, that, that's not my, my my bag at all. Um, and some of their policies and, and stuff, you know, mm -hmm. um, going back down the ways. And also with Labour as well, and what their, their stuff was, you know, um, I, I don't agree with some of that. But me, I'm going to be off peace, aren't I? Um, um, yeah, me, I, I, yeah, I just want to bring families and tell them that I'm a working man I work um, I live in a, um, a big council um, area you know uh, on a big big estate um, I love where I live I love the people where I live um, and I just want to say look you know vote for me and together we can make a difference we can make a change um, one voice can't make a, a, a difference but a load of voices can be heard mm -hmm. 
and, and that's what I want to bring to it. I yeah. want to be their voice for them to be heard. Yeah. We, we, we've seen yesterday the new trade deal with the EU was uh, agreed, mm. um, and trade deals worth £900 billion, uh, were, was agreed with other countries. Uh, do you reckon that's going to make a difference for residents? Because they are, you know, they're very leaning, Brexit leaning voters. I think at the end of the day, from we only have to look at the stats for the EU election, and they voted for Brexit. Um, yeah. Do you think that's going to bring, you know, great opportunities for residents in Ashford and for Beaver residents? I think it will bring uh, a lot to the community because you've you've only got to look where we where we live geographically where we live. We got the Channel Tunnel, which is about twelve miles away from us. We got Dover, twenty-two miles away from us. Um, Folkestone, there's there's investment in Folkestone as well. What they're doing on the seafront as well. Uh, there's investment in Ashford, um, and I think a lot of that will bring deals back to Ashford, um, and I think it will create a lot of jobs. And not only that, moving away from Europe, um, we haven't broken the ties completely. I know we moved away. But the other side of it, we still need to buy from Europe. Europe still need to buy from us. But we can bring more manufacturing back to England and we can bring up um, more local businesses. You've only got to look around some of the industrial states. Where I work, um, the amount of small businesses on that industrial state, and some of them are getting bigger, some are expanding. So there is work there to be had. And I think you know um, opportunities will, will come from that. And you've only got to look at COVID, how many opportunities how many businesses expanded diversified away from that and another good thing is what the government done to bring out a furlough scheme mm -hmm. um yeah some people have stayed at home for a whole year not working but they've been paid yeah. and i know some people said oh, i've only getting eight percent of my wages i've always looked at it that them 80 percent, that 20 percent is what you would have spent going out maybe to a pub to a show um to the cinema um but we couldn't spend that mm -hmm. So you you can't miss it. Yeah. Um, I just think the whole thing, when it, it all settles down, but getting rid of the COVID the, the system, I think it's here to stay anyway, but it will be controlled. But from that, like Phoenix from the Ashes, where rise and there'll be loads of opportunities, mm -hmm. loads of work and, and loads of small businesses, maybe big businesses coming to the area. You've, you know, Amazon talking about coming over oh, to, yeah. to um, Ashford. Um, you've got to look at um, Netflix thinking mm -hmm. of buying a big studio in Ashford as well. So all them opportunities are there to be had mm -hmm. and it's just a matter of time when yeah. they turn up. There's a lot of jobs and income mm -hmm. for Ashford and not mm -hmm. only Ashford as a whole for um, sort of the taxpayers, but other businesses that are going to be in the facility of mm -hmm. Netflix and Amazon and they're going to be the ones that Netflix and Amazon are going to go to first. Oh yeah, um, definitely. They're going to go to them, to the local independents of Ashford, to get their supplies instead of going probably to the bigger ones. Hmm. Um, and they've already said that they're going to support local businesses if, hmm. if they arrive. Um, so it's definitely going to be great for yeah. us in Ashford. But I mean, I've been out in Beaver, and we only, we only have to look at nationally at the moment. There's, there's obviously an issue with knife crime. Mm. and the, there was a young lad who did get stabbed on the Beaver Road. Um, what do you think you're going to do if, if you do get elected? How will you help residents and those who are victims of crime or those who need who may be carrying a knife who aren't aware of the outcomes and what could happen for carrying a knife? I think there's, 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 that's a good question. I think there's loads of things you can take from that, and it's sad that that, that young chap, did die um but um and, and i've you know um like i say my love out to his family and friends and it's lovely they've got a lovely shrine um to that as well um and and the flowers and the lights were on there as well and long may it re re remain i think the, the thing you got to look at is two things um education um and facilities for for, mm -hmm. for teenagers for children growing up there's years ago i grew up where there was youth wings and youth mm -hmm. clubs and, and loads of sporting yeah, things you go to yeah they have gone but through um more funding um mm -hmm. i'm not saying it's a bottomless pit but a bit more funding a few more charities in the area where kids can go to um to a club after school mm -hmm. in the evening time teenagers can go to to places and and hang out um and vent their frustration their angst as well but also uh 
a better police presence in the area, not a brutality or anything like that, but more um, community police officers yeah. in the area just to go around and, and see the community and, mm. and talk to people. Yeah, visibility uh, on the street. Yeah, the definitely. Community. Yeah, and go around there and also do little workshops and, and let people mm. know the, the, the pitfalls of, of carrying weapons um, around and, and what the repercussions are and the consequences are. You know, you could be a... Um, a, a normal, fun-loving kid who's gone out um, and instantly carries a knife with him, and getting stopped um, that could change your whole career, uh, your whole thing. You know, getting a criminal record for for no fault, um, really. Um, and I think it's quite sad. So I think mean, if we bring back that police presence, not a heavy-handed, but just a, a Bobby on a beat. Yeah. Um, I grew up with a Bobby on a beat. That was grand. Yeah, people want to see that there yeah. is a presence. Of, you yeah. Know, they want to see the car and they want to see the police officers walking down the street saying hi. Yeah, saying hello, yeah. People definitely. seem to have lost that recently. Yeah, we have. Um, but then we haven't got enough police. But, I mean, we look at government yesterday, 8,750, I think, new police officers across mm. the nation. So hopefully we will start to see more on the street. Mm. Um, and we are seeing things like knife crime. There is these new knife boxes for people to be able to drop their knives yeah. in. Uh, we got one in Park Mill. I've seen one over in Stanhope. Is there things that you're you're willing to do as a borough council to, to maybe increase them or other sort of I don't know initiatives to be able to? I think, yeah, I think initiatives um, definitely clubs, local clubs, uh, a boxing gym mm. is is great for for children to to vent, mm, especially teenagers. Uh, and yeah, stuff. definitely to to vent and train, um, and it's a way of discipline as mm. well. Um, the sports centre, the Ray Allen Sports Centre bringing that back online mm. and, and children to go there, kids to go there, teenagers to go there. Um, the area over the back of Noakes Meadow where you've got that um, basketball court, oh, yeah. to develop that, um, to change that, mm. to, to have teen, uh, children go out there, teenagers go out there, um, who can who can go out there and play, play some sport. Look at Victoria Park. You know, I go for a walk over there at the weekend and the amount of different families using the park and mm. the facilities. And maybe... Uh, a little workshop over there, you know, you, you, you can have the, the police there, you can have the fire brigade, you can have the ambulance service, doing a little workshop over there, yeah. just to, and you can have some trades as mm. well, you know, um, it wouldn't hurt, you know, uh, in, in, in the summertime, when kids are thinking about what careers they can do, have something in the Victoria Park, where you've got all these little stands of all these different trades, to so say, look, try that, try this, hair and beauty, um, going to the fire service, or going to be a plumber, be a bricklayer, be a motor mechanic, you know, be a sound engineer, but stuff like that to bring it back into the community because there's loads of businesses around doing mm. that. And apprenticeships are brilliant, you know what I mean? You know, you get paid for having an apprentice, the apprentice gets paid, and you're all everyone's paying it forward. And at the end of it, that, that he or she can walk away with a um, certificate to say, Look, I'm qualified, no one can take that away from me. I can go and start my own business or I'll go and work for them. I think that's grand. Yeah, you know I, mean? I really like that idea. That's really good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, we have got the police crime commissioner Matthew Scott, who is running again. Hmm. Hopefully, gets re-elected. Hmm. Is, is it something that you're already speaking to him about, or you? I haven't. To? I, yeah, I haven't spoken to him. Um, yeah, um, I would like to to speak to him, hmm. and especially, um, I'm talking a sensitive subject now. Growing up as a kid, um, and from a getting stopped um, for no reason. Um, when I was um, dry, when I learned learned to drive past my test, mm. constantly getting stopped um, by the police, um, and this went on till uh, well into my thirties. Um, it got to a point where my friends, when they were in the car with me, would would um, one would put their hand over my mouth to stop me talking, um, because of fear of what I might say yeah. to that policeman. Because I've been stopped like ten minutes ago for no reason and getting mm. stopped again, and they had talked for me. And it, it looked quite dodgy at the time but it was only to keep me safe yeah. and from me saying something that I may may regret and it mm. weren't I had no angst against them but I could see um, growing up in that area of what police were about like then and it's just edu- edu- education education for yeah. for people I, and I don't have that issue now I've got no 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 um, nothing against the police at, at all I've got friends who are police and who have um, and I'm still friends with now, you know, and, and, and successful careers and stuff. And I think it's bringing that education 
and that understanding across the divide to everyone. Mm. You know what I mean? And 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 stuff like that. I, I just like to bring people together. You know, we all live here. We're all here once. We've only got one life to live. Let's live it. Let's enjoy it, and let's work together and be together. Uh, and all this hostility and stuff. There's no need for it. You know mm. what I mean? We're a long time dead. So why not enjoy ourselves while mm. we're here? You know, embrace embrace the human life we've been given, the life we've been been blessed with. Let's let's enjoy that and embrace that. Mm. We sound like a really good community man. You want to get involved. Mm. You know, you're, you're looking out for your community, and it sounds like your community knows you now. That you know, mm. they they want to come. They're knocking on your door. They're bringing they're bringing some Nepalese food. Mm. So it sounds like you've built quite a good name in the Beaver Ward amongst your community. Mm. Um, you, have you seen sort of that support with local businesses? Because there's a lot of independent businesses in Beaver. Hmm. Um, what, what do you, what, what's their views been when you've been knocking out on doors and you've been giving leaflets out and stuff like that? What, what, what have you heard when you've been out on the campaign? When, I, when I've been out, I mean, I've had a lot of um, positive feedback hmm. um, from people, which has been nice, and and from some of the local businesses as well, which, hmm. which has been really nice. I've had, had some feedback from people who have got businesses in Ashford, but not in my ward, yeah. uh, which I'm, I'm hoping to, to win, um, who, who give me great feedback. They said, yeah, I've seen your leaflet. I've <laughs> even taken it over to my mum who lives way out the area just to show what, what, you know, what you're standing for. And I think that's brilliant. You know, yeah, that, that's, that's lovely because it, it, it's, it's probably getting me out there in that way. <laughs> but, um, you know, I, I just, the local businesses, and I've always been one to support your local businesses, the, the supermarkets, as much as they're essential and what they they got, they got such a monopoly on on stuff mm. that you know we need local businesses because you know without local businesses you know we, we wouldn't have mm. that opportunity to to look around and, and shop around yeah. for, for goods because the monopoly will be with with the big superstores. So yeah, no, definitely local communities are, are, are shops are, are, are definite. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, definite. Um, and it's sad to see some of them go, but obviously, you know, uh, unfortunately, we've, we've lost quite a lot more now with COVID. Mm. Um, I mean, I walked through the town the other day, and mm. you know, the for sale signs are up in a lot of these independent mm. businesses that have maybe not got the support that they should during COVID, or people just haven't been people haven't been able to go out. No, um, and that, that's a, a shame to see. Yeah, um, and hopefully, there could be more done to get them back in the town, get them back up and running and supporting our community. Um, yeah, definitely. Something that you're going to be supporting if, as a bar council, you're going to be pushing for yeah. sort of local independent businesses to get more involved in new projects or, you know, are you going to be pushing it at ABC level and to your fellow KCC councillors as well? Definitely. I mean, you, you need local. I say you need you need a town. Every town needs a town centre. Mm. Um, and, you know, it's no good going to a town centre full of hairdressers <laughs> And, and a few banks and a few few bars. You need shops, you need all that. And if you entice that back and entice people to build and work on that, then you can bring it back and you can bring that town centre spirit back completely, you know. Mm. And um, I hope it, it does come back. And, you know, like Debenham's going, it's a, you know, there's a massive loss, um, you know, across the whole, whole country. But hopefully in time, businesses will come back to Ashford and the town centre will become vibrant and, and big again. And like I say, once we get out of this, this pandemic and, and we've seen the back end of it, and hopefully like a phoenix from the ashes, we can rise mm-hmm. up again and we can have a town centre where it, it was fun yeah. you know, and vibrant. People are shopping, there's loads of different shops, loads of independent shops, and there's a lot of opportunity. Mm-hmm. But that'd be something I will lobby to the uh, Ashford Council to say, look, what are you going to bring and entice businesses Mm. back to the area what can you do to bring businesses back to the area stop the expansion outside the town bring it back into the town you know we're on a ring road the town centre's on a ring Mm. road you can't expand it off that ring road Mm -hmm. but you can you can grow inside of that yeah Yeah. maybe a bit like a plant you take the plant out you repot it and it becomes more Mm. vibrant again that's what we need we need to look at it and think right we need this this and this and and grow it again mm. yeah. it sounds like you've got a plan it sounds like it can be some mm. of action when you if yeah. you get elected and you're straight mm. in there mm. um it sounds like you've, you've got a busy life though <laughs> you know yeah, with, yeah. With work with family with dogs a garden you know your restoration mm. I'm, I'm intrigued to know what what pushed you to stand um i right i i work um 
I've been lucky enough that I've changed my hours at work um, because I was doing ridiculous long hours. I've changed my hours mm. at work, um, which is which is grand, um, you know. Uh, but I I wanted something myself. I wanted to do something for mm. myself, and I wanted I wanted something. I needed something. I thought you know, my restoration project project is like a um, is a long term thing. You know, what I mean, I'm not rushing to get it done. It's just like a it's a hospital job. Yeah. Um, as and when um, and the family family is important to me definitely you know 110 percent um, you know they, they come first in, in everything um, but I needed something for myself and I wanted to think you know just sitting there thinking no I want to do that I want to stand mm. in our ward because I was fed up with having people not in my ward being counsellors you know, who represent my ward, but not in my ward. And I thought, yeah. what better would it be to have someone who lives in the ward mm. to stand for the ward? Because they understand the ward. Yeah, local. Yeah, they understand it. it. Yeah. yeah, they understand the ward. They know what, what the ward needs. And they know what the surrounding area needs. Mm. Um, and that's what I wanted to to do um, and to, to bring to it a voice inside the ward who can speak for the, for the ward and can change things, hopefully in time um, not with a magic wand but in time to go in there and change things but also to change the area and change the mindset mm. and bring a fresh ray of life into it you know what I mean yeah. um, someone with a bit of diversity bring that to the table mm. as well it, it sounds like you're going to be a, a strong voice for Beaver mm. if you're elected mm. uh, especially being local living in the ward mm. which is great for residents because they, they know who you are they know that mm. you see the issues that mm. are happening now you say family is a an important thing for you. When you said you're going to stand, what what was their reaction? Um, they're really supportive. Yeah. Um, yeah, really supportive. Right. Um, definitely, they've been out helping me um, do leaflets, mm. uh, drop leaflets and stuff, and that, and you know, um, talking with with, with, with mm. their friends as well. Um, and like I said to my um, children, I said that you know, um, you've got your own voice as well. So you know. Um, what you go with if you if you don't decide to because your views are you're a young person I want to know your views on what you mm. you you see I mean you're, you're getting it from dad's perspective perspective on on things and mum's let me hear it from your side as well you know what I mean you're mm. you know you're teenagers I want to hear your perspective let me let me take it from your side and talk to your friends about it you know in the area and what they want mm. uh, uh, and, and need and so I can get that as well, engage with that as well, engage across the divides, you know. Um, I've already had um, three people ring me up um, and say, oh, um, can you help with this or can you help with that? Um, and I said, look, listen, I've taken your, your points. I've, um, I said, I'll, I'll send an email off um, to the council. I said, I'm not being elected to be a councillor, but I've taken your comments on board and I will forward them on to the council to see what happens mm. Uh, from now and I said but yeah definitely represent you at the moment um, because I don't want to be one to oh no I can't represent you because I haven't been elected I want to <laughs> yeah, it sounds heard. like you've been quite proactive even mm. though yeah. you're not elected yet you you, know, you want to make change now mm. even if you're not elected just yet um, and hopefully residents will see that you know you're going to be a strong voice for them that you're independent mm. you know you're a local um, candidate who lives in the ward who knows the issues and hopefully they'll see that on Thursday, the 6th of May. Yeah, um, definitely. And I think, hopefully, that they will vote. Um, I mean, we get a lot of people at the moment who aren't voting. And they say that a majority of people don't vote. You know, what are your views on people who don't vote? You know, at the end of the day, they've, they've got to vote to have a voice. Mm, um, yeah. But so what's your views on, you know, what's, what? what's your message to those who don't vote? So my message to those who don't vote, if you don't vote... Um, you know, I always say this: if you don't vote, you you can't have a you can have an opinion. Anywhere, everyone can have an opinion. Mm. Everyone's entitled to opinion. But have a vote, and you can change. You can change things. Mm. By not it, it we reset to back to square one, and we got this whole thing of process again of of, of counting up again. But if we all vote, we can make this strong enough that we can make a difference. Mm. Um, because. You know, look at it. We've had a Labour and a U uh, a UK Independent Party, Labour, UK Independent Party. You know, uh, 
for years mm. and nothing's changed nothing's happened yeah. let's have a bit of fresh blood into the area vote have your say and let's hear your voice and let's move forward you know what I mean let's, let's try and change it because mm. if we have another four years of a, of a Labour or a UKIP um, a councillor you know we've had that for years mm. and nothing's happened I've seen play parks dilapidated and not changed and you know and building work going on etc etc come on you know let's, let's, let's change it let's, mm. let's be a, a voice and say yeah. look come on we want to drive we want to change it we want to bring back that colour we don't want grey anymore yeah you know? also, I mean just listening to you this afternoon has been really great you know mm. it sounds like you've got a plan you know you're you want to make change. You want to just get on with it and yeah, definitely make a difference to your local community, which I'm really passionate about people doing. Um, so I'm going to end it there. Um, it's been really good to have you. But before we end, just give the voters a little bit, a, a, a thirty second message on why they should vote for you, um, and what day the election is. Um, I'd say vote for me, Trevor Brooks, um, Conservative councillor. I want to make a difference. I want to bring a difference to, to the area. Um, I want to bring a life back to the area and bring a sense of community back to the area. Um, we need that. So please vote for me on the 6th of May. Um, I would really appreciate it. And together, we can make a change and we can make a difference. Um, and if enough of us vote and we do win, then I would go out there and make a difference and be a voice to be heard across the divide, across all the divide, um, and leave no no one out. No one gets left mm. out. You know, what I mean, no matter what your uh, what your uh, ethnicity is, um, nothing nothing gets left out. And everyone's in the same boat with me, and we're heading that same direction. Mm. Turn it into the storm. It's going to be a bit rough, where we try to make things change. But after we've done that, we can get out the other side, and we can say, look, what we've we done but we still need to improve things. Mm. It's not going to be like a, oh, just do that and keep them quiet. No, we want to progress. We want to grow. And then in four years' time, thinking, wow, we've, we've made a change. Let's see what the next four years bring and, and, and go from there. And you never know. You know what I mean? Um, love to be a, an MP one day, um, making big, big changes <laughs> across the divide. But, you know, I've got to start somewhere <laughs> and, and be a, a voice of the people. But be a voice of the local people. Yeah, and, and bring it out there. Well, thank you for joining me this evening, no, Trevor. Thanking you. Thank you. It's been lovely. And thank you. if you're a voter or you live in the Beaver Ward, then on Thursday, the sixth of May, this Thursday, vote for Trevor Books. I'm going to leave his Facebook and his information down below. Go and have to check him out. Have a look. If you've liked what you've heard, then you know, give him a vote. If you've got some other questions that you want to know, then his details are on the links below. And just get in contact with him. You know, ask him personally. He's probably more than willing to, you know, answer him for you. Uh, he, I mean, he has for me this evening. So if you liked what you heard, vote for Trevor Brooks on Thursday, the 6th of May, 2021. I think Trevor Brooks, 6th of May, 2021. Please. Thank you. Soon to be your next borough councillor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thanking you. Thanks, Trevor. Cheers. Cheers.